talking today with Alison Sant, who together with her husband, uh, Rick Johnson, has a firm in San Francisco called Studio for Urban Projects. She took off time from her vacation to meet with me to talk about water and climate change and all the design solutions that we're thinking up nowadays to deal with this. Hello, Alison. Hello. Hello. So thank you for taking time from your vacation to meet with me and talk about water and climate change and the issues San Francisco is facing. What did you, what did you hope to learn by meeting with me? <laughs> well, we've been doing research for a book called Ground Up, the local movement to create resilient cities. And there's so much going on in the Netherlands broadly looking at water. And this nation has clearly been dealing with uh, water for a lot longer than we have at least been thinking about it heavily in the United States. So there's great examples both in Amsterdam and Rotterdam and, uh, and beyond of ways in which we can think about living with water. And is there one project that has really impressed you that you thought we can do that in San Francisco? You know there have been a lot and I think that um, there's, of course, newer projects like the water plazas, which I think is a great illustration of how we can allow our cities to fill with water and have more flexible, flexibly designed spaces that can be a playground during the day, and then when it floods, it can be a pond. Just, it's almost now a week ago that I bought these amazing tulips, and they're growing out of the vase as if they're going to eat the food off my plate. And they remind me so much of the 17th century still life flowers that you see in paintings by, uh, for example, Franz Hals. He has some wonderful tulips in his flowers, in his uh, paintings. Ah, I love flowers. So girls, this is hard work, more than you counted on. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be really, really nice. And white. All bright. <laughs> All bright and white. <laughs> <laughs> organization, which, which is uh, it's a combination of four uh, venues. Uh, the first is uh, Venus Militis, uh, that's a house of uh, enlightenment. Uh, we have the uh, Company Theater, uh, uh, the, the, the Rode Hood, uh, and this venue here, uh, which is the New Liefde. Uh, and it's, uh, they're all venues uh, about um, debate, uh, art, uh, and um, giving meaning to life, or for the things that give meaning to life, the, uh, the things that make life worth living actually. These, these venues have only been working together for like three months, and I think uh, in the city of Amsterdam, which is very lively, and there are a lot of uh, uh, venues that are unique in their own way, so to be uh, a really good uh, co combination of, of venues, we need unique profiles. So we're working on uh, different profiles and I think that the way that it's heading is that this place where we are at now, the, uh, the New Relief there, uh, one of the things that distinguish this, this venue from the others is, is poetry. This is the Chanel building in the PC Hoogstraat in Amsterdam, our fanciest shopping street here. And this was designed by the Dutch firm called MVRDV. Uh, they had these glass bricks made in Italy and it is absolutely bewitching. Everybody who walks by has to stop and touch it. And I think it's actually quite lovely. Congratulations to MVRDV for their public prize.
This is one of the so-called uh, negen straatjes, the nine streets, which are the cross streets of the canals here in Amsterdam. And a lot of the really specialty shops have disappeared because the rents have gone crazy because these streets are so popular now. But there are still some really special stores here, like this uh, uh, violin builder and uh, this shop with all sorts of uh, esoteric uh, uh, Indian stuff. And there's a pop-up store here, uh, Brownie and Blondie, which is now organized by the guy from Matter of Material, the Dutch design store in the Kerksat. And I did a vlog with him recently, so I thought I'd come in and, uh, and have a look around. important site for looking for a house in the Netherlands. I found my house in Funda. Millions of people find their houses on Funda and every household in the Netherlands, seven million households a day, look at Funda to find a new house. I'm here with Jacqueline Post yes. and with Gonneke Daris. Hello, and we're doing an event together at the Provada, the real estate fair, on May 30th. Jacqueline, yes. what are we going to do? We're going to have a very interesting discussion on uh, building houses and whether the consumer should be involved in his dream house. Very interesting. And uh, Gonneke, you already did a project called the Funda House. Yes. Uh, tell me about it. Yeah, it's a very exciting and inspiring project actually, because we uh, created a house, we designed the house together with two uh, architects from the Netherlands, um, in which all the wishes and dreams are uh, combined with the reality that uh, people actually can afford. Yeah. So at this conference, which I am moderating, are you going to say that this is the house of the future or is this just an, an experiment in new ways of thinking? It's new ways of thinking actually. Yes. Yeah. A wake up call for the market, I guess. Ah. Um, and a call, should we try and listen to the customer? Should we experiment on this? And who will join us in this? Zem Wharf, a former uh, shipyard uh, in the north of Amsterdam, and we're here for a special gathering. This is the first uh, joint session of the Fan Club of the Zem <laughs> Wharf. Oh, you're the chairman yeah, of the Fan Club. And I'm a proud uh, chairman of that. <laughs> and, uh, we're here to brainstorm about the future of this amazing place. Okay. And also to make a plea for keeping it uh, empty and keeping it free from development. Yeah, you had a start document called the, the value of emptiness, which exactly. I thought was mm -hmm. really uh, beautifully said. Anyway. This was by far the most fun thing I've done today. Uh, I went to a concert at Paradiso by the <laughs> Belgian band Bazaar. And wow, <laughs> they are really good. They're very musical. The lead singer is a, a super sexy showman. He's fantastic. And uh, uh, everybody was singing along. They were just going crazy. Everybody knew every single lyric of every single song by heart they just lapped it up and oh goodness here i am with my friend mariana after the concert we're having a drink at the bali and you can see it's packed here with all sorts of exciting young hip people <laughs> and i love the bali this is also where my talk show is so we decided to come here and have a drink after the concert I'm on my way to uh, The Hague to visit a new building and then on my way to Barcelona. So I'm taking leave of 
Amsterdam as we go. And I wanted to show you this extraordinary scene. You never see this. This is the Rembrandt Square with the lovely cherry blossoms blowing in the wind and empty and peaceful. It's extraordinary. opening of an important new building here in the center of The Hague. It's called B30, and I'm writing about it for Architectural Record. B30 is an abbreviation of the address, uh, the Zuid de Hansweg uh, 30, here in the center of The Hague, and it's a building from 1917, which has, used to be the Ministry of Trade and uh, Agriculture, and it's been redesigned by the firm called uh, Kaan Architecte, uh, to house a number of knowledge institutions here in the Netherlands, such as the Environmental Assessment Agency, the Central Plan Bureau, uh, the Authority of uh, Personal Data. And they have, I think, done an absolutely fantastic job of making this rather uh, solid, hierarchical building from a completely different era into an open, welcoming, um, uh, warm, uh, Center for Knowledge and Exchange. San Jordi, which is a special Catalonian festival and is celebrated especially here in Barcelona. Here behind me you see the Casa Bajo, one of the real masterpieces of Antoni Gaudi. On the Paseo de Gracia you can see how packed it is with people who are out celebrating and buying each other books and roses. This is the Festival of Books and Roses. It's a variation on the legend of St. George and the Dragon. Uh, the dra uh, St. George came and killed the dragon, the dragon's blood ran into the ground and the reddest roses ever grew there. He picked a rose and gave it to the princess and as thanks the princess gave the prince a book. And of course they lived happily ever after. First day back in Barcelona, first uh, crazy, crazy uh, uh, people's party on the streets of uh, San Jordi, and now I'm on the Renfe, which is sort of the light rail for the area around uh, Barcelona, uh, on my way to uh, Tiana, which is the place where friends of mine have a house, and I'm going to go have lunch with them. Another fun event today. This is the beautiful theater in Poblesec in Barcelona called Mercat de les Flores. Fantastic building and always amazing modern dance. I come here almost every time I'm in Barcelona and today we're going to see a Spanish group called Intrusa. Well, this was a wonderful way to end the week. I made it to Barcelona and I have a few days here now to 
rest and relax and go to the gym and eat good food and see friends and read and write and all the wonderful things that I do. And of course, enjoy the sun. I think it's going to be nice weather. Okay, that was this week's vlog. See you next week.